Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Namah Shivaya Om Brahma Miras Tuparam Takare Banu Shashi Bhami Sito Udasha Guru Sha Shukra Shani Rahu Keteva Sarve Graha Shanti Kara Bhavan Tu Om Om Hrim Gurave Namaha Om Hrim Shukraya Namaha Om Namah Shivaya well, greetings and welcome to Cosmic Kev 100. This is your weekly astro video zine where we take the planets and the illuminaries because we know the moon and the sun aren't actually planets, but we call them grahas. These are grabbers. Now, I encourage you here at Cosmic Kev 100 to subscribe because I need more subscribers. And to like this video if you like it. I love hearing from you and your comments. I appreciate you. A little bit about me, I have been studying astrology for approximately 42 years now and originally was introduced to Western astrology and evolutionary Western astrology. Over the last 15 years, I've moved into the sidereal zodiac Vedic astrology, although this horoscope that I'm giving you is mostly Western because that's what most of you know and understand, but I like to put in a little bit of my knowledge of Jyotish, my knowledge of Vedic astrology, so that when we do this, you can um, learn something new that's really deep, actually, and relates very um, directly and deeply to other aspects of our, of our experience. So, this is for September 29th, 2023, through... October 4th, 5th, 6th, about the, through the 6th of um, 2023, of uh, September through October. So basically September 29th, starting, starting Friday, and, um, and then finishing off by the end of next Thursday. So what's going on? Well, we just had a full moon this morning at 2.38 a.m. if you're watching this Friday. It hasn't happened yet when I'm recording it, but at 2.58 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time Friday, there's a full moon that could be seen in the constellation of Pisces if you're looking in the sky. Now, I know Western astrology will say this is an Aries full moon, but that's not where it actually is if you're looking in the sky. And so, I one of the things I like about Jyotish, Vedic Astrology, Sidereal Astrology, it's more correct as to what we're looking at in these present times, and it has great revelation in our life. Um, I put rising sign and moon sign above the sun as far as influence on your life. Uh, moon rules our mind, rising sign rules our behavior. And so, what's going on here in the head and how you behave ultimately is going to be a deeper truth. Now, in Vedic astrology, before they even had the, the Rishis or the 12 signs of the zodiacs, they had lunar mansions known as nakshatras. Now, this particular nakshatra or placement of the moon is in a place called Uttara Bhadrapada or Uttara Bhadra. And Uttara Bhadra has a ruling deity known as Adhirn Budhnya who is the serpent of the deep, and reminds us that we need to transform. We need to shed some old skin in order to move forward in our life. And because this is all in the constellation of Pisces, it's sort of like a, an ending, what we need to put away. This is, you know, harvest moon. This is the, the full moon that's closest to the autumnal equinox. So it's got a certain amount of power with it in that. And... It's also this particular nakshatra or lunar mansion is ruled by Saturn. And the Saturn ruled nakshatra is Pushama, Anurara, and Uttarabhadra are the best nakshatras in a lot of ways because Saturn relates to our vata. It relates to our etherical energy, which is really kind of like soul energy in a lot of ways, spiritual energy. It's 
mental energy as well. It's where our karma is, though, ultimately. And this is symbolic of the tail end of the funeral pyre. The Bhadras are funeral pyres. Purva is the beginning of it, and Uttara is the end of it. And the end of it, we're kind of purified. And there's sort of this lightness of being that comes out with Uttara Bhadra. And when this happened, this particular um, full moon peaked, the rising sign in the West Coast in sidereal astrology, not Western, but was, um, was Cancer. So how this relates to our emotions. And the moon was at that point in the ninth house, expressing divine wisdom and divine guidance. And that's really what we need right now. Although Saturn, of course, was in the eighth house. And so that's kind of deeper transformation that can be sort of difficult. And so there's, you know, change on the horizon. Now, in Western astrology today, you know, we've got a moon in Aries. And that's where the full moon was this morning, was um, in Aries. And so... Um, you know, and that's, you know, I always start the chart because I do Western horoscopes for people in Aries. And um, Aries full moon can be a pretty violent full moon, to be honest with you. Um, you know, births are violent. Uh, you know, there's bloodshed. There, there's sometimes pain. And, you know, there's a lot of noise from moms and from new babies. And um, Aries key phrase is I am. I want to give a shout out to uh, a friend of mine who goes on uh, YouTube as Kimmy. And she uh, had a lovely thing of like positive affirmations in the I am, you know, with this full moon, what, what you want to be. I am beautiful. I am wealthy. I am compassionate. I am opening to new knowledge, you know, things like that. Great affirmations go really well with this. Um, full moon. And, you know, full moons are sort of like the peaks of what we did. Now, the last new moon we had was in the, the tail end of Leo. And so we're kind of working on our heart, you know, as far as, you know, it was in Virgo and Western astrology. And so there's this element of getting the help we need to have to be healthier, whole people. And also it was sort of a a groundbreaking place of serving and helping others. And even this full moon's horoscope looked like it affirmed that. We're still needing to help others. We're still needing to serve others. So I'm going to go sign by sign now according to um, the tropical zodiac or western zodiac, starting with you, Aries. So greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, there's a little bit of confrontation that you're receiving in relationships. And really, one of the things is, it's all about us. And it's really us determining how we want to behave. Now, I can remember growing up and people saying, well, if somebody gives me some, you know, problems, I'm going to give them problems right back. That's really not a good way to do because for one, number one, that makes you reactionary. You're letting their behavior determine how you behave. And... Fighting fire with fire actually leads to a lot of destruction. But say you're just staying cool, cool like water, and say, well, you know, I'm really glad you shared that with me. Obviously, that's how you feel. That's putting water on that fire, and all of a sudden they're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. You know, that's how you can make peace during this full moon, even while you're going through confrontations. Hmm. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. This has been a real expansive year for you. There's been a lot of personal growth for you. And that growth continues. But that, with, along with that growth, there's been a lot of, like, surprises. And there's been shocks. And, you know, Jupiter's retrograde. Any planet that's retrograde is closer to us. And so, right now, it's like your inner guidance. Do you have a spiritual life? It's good. To pray to God, it's good to pray, but do you listen? Do you listen to God's voice? You know, God has many names, many ways of being. I, I like to see God as the divine parents 
climb on the throne because God's not just male, God's not just female, God's both. And so the divine parents want the best for all of us. And, and Taurus tends to like family. They tend to want to preserve whatever is good. And if they don't have a good family, they'll make their own family with their friends. And during this full moon, it's in the 12th house, so pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to everything that you need to let go of. And make a donation. Make some good karma, because that's where the sun is at. You know, sun's in your 6th house. That's the opposite. So that good karma will help balance off any hardship you're going through. Greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. Your key phrase, of course, is I communicate. And Libra times, Libra's key phrase is I balance. You know, we're in Libra time. And then we've got this full moon in Aries. Well, Aries is sort of like your social life, helpful friends, um, partying. You're going to be out partying. And I mean, there was a lot, there was some things indicated in this that social gatherings are really positive during this full moon. So, I mean... You know, it was, the energy was gained Thursday night, so if you aren't seeing this until Friday morning, I mean, there's still some of that energy, but it's a waning full moon at this point, you know, it's shrinking, and so its power is sort of diminishing, and, and we're in the let-go period until the next new moon, which comes, I think, on the 14th, 15th, it's going to be, um, there's an eclipse, you know, that, that there's a more intense energy coming on. And so whatever we can do to kind of clean house with our people and do what we can to support each other and create space for spiritual value, that's what's really going to work out the best during this time period. Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, Libra time, of course, Libra's in the fourth house for you. So that brings you into your, your natal house, which is about feelings. It's about personal happiness. It's about fixed resources. Like if you own real estate or a house, even a vehicle, uh, those things are more prominent, a little bit more on the radar. One of the things that's going to happen this week, too, that I've gotten, you know, from Vedic astrology is that um, Venus is sort of in, in the sidereal zodiacs between Cancer and Leo. And so this is like, you know, it's, it's dead on in Leo, but any kind of karmatic thing that happens socially in your love life that gets kind of stirred up this week. It's just really important to just keep peace and sit and let let it be known that this is only temporary, and that you have a really creative mindset, and there's the pleasures of the bed, but not, you know, all your girlfriends may not be having your your best interest completely too, and so you know, bring it bring it to the divine parents, um, bring it to God, and things will be so much better. All right. Greetings, Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. And one of the things, this full moon is kind of like a fun full moon for you because this full moon is in the ninth house. This full moon signifies maybe taking a trip or having a little bit of an adventure. And, you know, Rahu, the north node of the moon is there. To, so there's this sense of destiny and maybe even this little kind of tingle of uncertainty and ungroundedness along with this, um, with this full moon. And, and you've been going through a lot of personal transformation this year. There's been a lot of things that have been beyond your control. Maybe your girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse, husband or wife are doing really well this year. But it's kind of humbling, you know, and... and your whole world is getting expanded in a lot of ways. And since, you know, Venus is in Leo, and it will be this week, but it's gone from that Gandanta point, that knot in the sidereal zodiac, um, there is this sort of mixed feelings about where you are in, in love. And, you know, I, I would say... The great quote from this Beatles song is that the love you take is equal to the love you make. And it's really, love is about giving. Love, isn't, love is about flowing. It's about emptying yourself. 
and being available for the best qualities of a person and acknowledging those. And that's really where we're going to see the fulfillment in this. But overall, there's kind of like this kind of good luck full moon. And as we go through the weekend, some of your own personal performance energy will come out and start your work week really nice. Well, greetings, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. So you've got the sun in the second house. And so that's a value. This is kind of where you make money. This is also about family, being in touch with family and what's been going on in family. And, you know, I, I know from my own personal life, being Virgo rising, that I have had, you know, a lot of family things have come up since the sun has um, moved into the second house, maybe even sidereally before I'd even say... Um, you know, or Vedically, before it did in Western astrology, uh, late night, the 22nd. Okay. But this is also about money and finances and resources, and sometimes you have to pay to play. So you might be having greater expenses, but you also may have greater opportunities to make more money. So that, that you know, they're both positive, whatever the ka karma is. You're, you're helping others by giving to them. Now, this full moon, it's in the 8th house. 8th house... You know, sometimes things we're not really completely in control of. And here on the West Coast and in California, we're getting like our, our second or third real storm of the fall. And they've been little so far, and they probably still will continue to be. But there might be some snow in the mountains, and it's, it's cooling down. And a lot of times we have this lengthy Indian summer that lasts almost to Halloween, at least up here in Chico. Usually... To, we're usually pretty warm till the third, third, fourth week of October. And then usually that fourth week of October, right around the, the 23rd, 24th, as the sun goes into Scorpio, boom, you know, let's put on the sweaters. It's getting a little chilly. It's a little bit invigorating, you know, so to speak. And um, this whole deal is like, you've had fun socializing and getting yourself out there. Uh, you have knowledge that you're able to share with others because you have a certain level of intelligence that's admired universally. Your critical analysis is needed. This particular full moon, though, is about allowing others to kind of just do their thing and, and maybe being a little bit more of an observer because not everything is really pre predictable in this. It's also allowing other people to help you. You know, letting them come to your aid and just paying attention, having an ear to God. Uplifting spiritual stuff. Forget the politrix, man. That that stuff will drag you down. It's all just materialistic, tomasic poo-poo. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. And happy birthday. If you're a Libra having a birthday this week, I want to just give a birthday shout-out to my... Um, lovely sister-in-law, Maya, who lives in Tijuana, and has just helped my family so much. I just want to give you a happy birthday shout out, and happy birthday to my friend Jada White, happy birthday to uh, Brent Clark, and to uh, Jeffrey House that are having birthdays this week, uh, Brent on the 2nd, Jeff on the on the fifth, and to all the wonderful, my my coworker Crystal, who's having a birthday, my my former coworker Uri, who's having a birthday on the first. I think both of these are on the first, and Jimmy Carter, who's turning ninety nine. Happy birthday, my friends! Happy birthday! Um, this is your renewal time, and this full moon is sort of romantic. Uh, this could, you know, stimulate better relationships. Um, Venus's movement is in your social house, and so friends, and giving love to your friends, giving love to your people, having a little party, you know, this is a really great year for you personally to have a birthday party and to enjoy that kind of energy of admiration. <clears throat> oh, greeting Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. So, okay, Mars is in those last um, degrees of Capricorn in the Western Zodiac, um, in tropical astrology. So, you know, it's like third, approaching 
fourth house, that's the nadir, you know, and that, that, you know, means that there's some real undercurrents of transformation, you know, getting in touch with that groundlessness and knowing that the divine, that the creator is here for us, that Mother Earth is holding us up, like those are going to be good affirmations for you. Now, Mars is in Libra, that's the 12th house, I mean, in more mundane Western astrology, we could say that's like um, secret enemies, people that don't have your best interests at heart. Hurting another person, though, is bad karma. And they will be thwarted as long as you stay in the light. As, you don't, as long as you don't give in to the deception. And uh, you will be protected. I just want you to know that. This full moon, Aries, you know, Aries is another Mars ruled sign like you. And um, Aries, six house is like watching your health but also doing service, helping other people, like, hey, can I lend you a hand with something? Uh, that really is going to help, you know, um, being physically fit, you know, putting out some energy, even if it's just a dance on Friday night, you know, that can just uplift the vibe. And what I see happening to you at this point as well is that your creative ability is being seen more. And... It's going to carry on into rewards in your life. So be really sensitive to that. Keep on putting your best work out there, Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, Jupiter's in Taurus. Um, and that's a sixth house. So that's about gaining energy with strength. This full moon, being in Aries, is so wonderful for you because it's a fifth house. Fifth house is love. It's being in the heart. It's about children, if you have children. It's about love affairs. It's about education, too, on a higher level. Um, it's about your performance, what you give to the world and others and by staying in your heart. You know, what motivates your heart is you're going to keep going because it brings you joy. It's like this thing... The joy of the Lord is my strength. God lives in the praises of his people. These are kind of like the affirmations for the fifth house. And this full moon really bringing you to a great place. And Sun and Libra, that's the 11th house. That's your social life and good connections. People that want the best from you. Sometimes that's older siblings. Sometimes that's bosses or even former bosses, people that want to uplift you, that might be in a higher position to help you. So be sensitive to all these things. Greetings Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so Aries full moon, that's the fourth house. Uh, that is ancestry, parents, older adults, fixed assets, working with what you've got. There, when we take care of business, you know, there's this immense feeling of relief, like, yeah, I'm taking care of stuff. Sometimes we get overwhelmed, we get depressed, we get stuck, we get uncertain, we don't know where to go. But right now, I'd say make that home base nice. Now, career-wise, Libra time's a big time for career. So some of you Capricorns will be starting new jobs, um, getting promotions, Great, and you're looking good with Mars there in the 10th house. I mean, you're really looking good like, yeah, this person's ready to do it. So just continue to put out that best effort, that concern, your heart. And the more we're able to give to others, the less we get hung up on what's going on with us. It, it actually, it's a win-win. It, it creates more space in our life for things to go up. Greetings, Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So good to be with you this week. Uh, so here we are, full moon in Aries. That's the third house. That's like your neighborhood. It's like, God, the neighbors are making a lot of noise, you know, on this full moon. There's a, this full moon kind of racket, you know, so to speak. Uh, it's also your siblings. And people you knew, you know, great school, through high school, maybe even undergrad. I mean, I kind of, there's different opinions about this, but I see the third house largely related. I kind of do seven years for every house cycle in our current paradigm of longevity or whatever. And so, you know, seven times 12 is 84. You make it to 84, 
you've done seven times 12. You've really, you know, you've done pretty good. Um, not that if you don't get that far, you've done bad. You know, God calls us all home for different reasons. Um, however, the, between age 14 and 21, that's kind of like my opinion, sort of the uh, symbology of the third house. And that's when you're really the most curious about stuff, information. Third house is all about information, gleaning information, gaining information. And so that's kind of where we, um, we see things with this full moon. It's like, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that about my neighbor. I didn't know that about my brother or my sister or cousin or person that I peer I grew up with. Um, now, Sun and Libra's ninth house. I mean, this is a lucky time for you. You're actually, you know, there's people helping you. And every little bit of help that we get to help us move forward, we need to honor those people who are helping us. So that's another, that's another positive. Um, and so... And with, you know, Venus in Leo in the seventh house, your love life, there's some just beautiful mm, magic coming on in the love life situation. All right. Greetings, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so Saturn is retrograde. It's close to you. It's in your first house. This is not necessarily an easy thing to deal with. Even Neptune, even though that's considered a co-ruler with Jupiter for you, it's, it's hard to sometimes pinpoint what's real and what's illusionary. And in this way, meditation is the best thing. Empty your mind. Okay, things are hard. You're facing real challenges right now. That is no joke. But you know what I think? You're up for it. That's why they've been given to you, because you're up for this. Full moon talk. Full moon's in the second house. Full moon could bring you in touch with family. Full moon can bring economic windfalls. Full moon could kind of affect your neck or, or your mouth. You know, take good oral hygiene, good eye care, um, your face. Uh, you know, just taking care of yourself. That's important right now. Eighth house. That's where the sun is. It's other people's power. And the best thing for you, Pisces, over the next two and a half weeks is just surrender. Don't expect things to be necessarily easy or perfect over the next maybe three weeks would probably be more accurate. But just have this sense of surrender and letting other people do their thing. And really, you're going to ultimately come on top because of this. Uh, good things are happening. So... I just want to thank you all who have subscribed already, who've supported me, or you can contact me um, on the YouTube channel if you want to get a personal reading from me. I'm actually quite reasonable, as well as uh, very experienced and knowledgeable over the years of studying these things. And ultimately, I just wish blessings on all of you. Thank you for tuning in. I just like to think that just you tuning in is good karma. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all my friends who've helped me so much, who've support me, supported me through this. There's too many of you to mention. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Tat Sat. Namaste.